Hey everyone, it's Hirsch Wilson, and today is February 4th. I'd like to talk a little bit today about the pandemic and, and what I think of as the loss of innocence. But before we get into that, I want to introduce to you our newest family member, Toby. This is Toby, uh, Great Pyrenees, and we've had him for about three weeks. He's fitting in really well, and we already love him to death. Not to be left out, this is Maisie, who we've had for about two years, and who runs the household. Okay, now that the important dog introductions are done, I'd like to dive into the topic for today. And let me start with the story. A few years ago, I was at my brother's house, Joey and his wife, Linda, and a few other firefighters. We were there and we were talking about a crash, uh, a train versus bicycle crash that had happened the weekend before. And as firefighters are want to do, we start talking about the mechanism of injury, how horrific the scene must have been, and whether or not it might have been an attempted suicide. Kind of just everyday normal firefighter talk. What we didn't notice was the expressions, the kind of shock expressions on the non-firefighters in the room. But my sister, who's a paramedic, did, and she turned to us and told us to shut up. We had broken the sacred first responder rule, which is never to talk about tragic calls outside of the brother and sisterhood. In a related story, a friend of mine who's a firefighter paramedic was seeing her therapist, which is a really smart and forward-thinking thing to do if you're in our vocation. Anyway, she was talking about a bad call that they had had the previous week, and the therapist just started weeping. I bring these stories up because I'm often told that I have a dark worldview and that I'm pessimistic. But the fact is, I was raised Irish Catholic by a mom who, anytime something bad happened, would always tell us kids that we should wait for the other shoe to drop. Very Irish. We're the kind of family that anytime the phone rings, we instantly pick it up, assuming that there's been a tragedy. Of course, I don't think that I have a dark worldview or that I'm pessimistic. I just think that I've gone through the transition that all first responders go through at some point in their career. I'm reading a book now that kind of gets to the same point. It's called Fragile by Dr. Shannon Sovendal. And it's essentially a memoir of his life as an ER doc. And he recalled that on during their white coach ceremony at Columbia University in New York, the first speaker, the head of the medical school, got up and told them all, you're about to lose your innocence. Of course, those words ring true for all first responders. You do lose your innocence. You realize that life is fragile, uncertain, and that we're surrounded by suffering. And then there's the big one, that we're all gonna die. Okay, don't open that next bottle of wine just yet. One of my most vivid memories as a firefighter is of my friend and colleague, Jürgen Voigtlander. He was one of the only communist, atheist, yet entrepreneurial, hardworking firefighters that I have ever known. And I write about this in my book, Firefighters. And one night we were coming home uh, about four o'clock in the morning in our ambulance from a bad call. And Jurgen mused for a while. And then he said, you know why I started to be a firefighter? I wanted to be a firefighter because I needed to bring death into my life. He said That's, that we die and that our loved ones die that gives life its urgency and its sweetness. Of course, we were, we were all young then. And we didn't understand that the universe would give this lesson to all of us eventually. It's an inescapable truth. Anyway, the pandemic has opened up a lot more individuals to this perspective. The firm ground that they stood on, that life was at worst benign and predictable, has been shaken by this last year. And I would say to those who have laid awake in uncertainty and maybe a little dread, that it's okay. As a firefighter, having been down this road for decades, it's, I know that it's survivable and you can find peace. First, if I could sum up what I've learned so far from Zen Buddhism, and I'm very, very much a novice, it is to accept reality and then be kind. I know it's very, very hard to accept reality, but that's kind of the first step in growing up in the universe. Next, Although I find status and money and being really busy in the economy interesting 
and, and we all have to make a living, they don't bring me joy. It is the super simple things now. Being with my family, saying I love you a lot, going hiking, being with my dogs, reading a book. My response to the firefighter life and the firefighter experience is to really understand my priorities and keep things simple. It is a hard, hard thing to do to let go of all that we've been trained to believe that life is about success, pleasure, youth, and that belief that we, different than every other human being that has ever lived, are somehow immortal. This is tough stuff. But as the Greek general Thucydides said in 400 BC, courage is the only option. So be brave, be kind, and fight fires.